Okay, I don't know what happened to the last video, but there was, I think uh, President Nixon may have got involved. There was some missing video in it. I have no idea what happened, but uh, hopefully I got that corrected. Um, but uh, I shot a lot of video, and then when I started putting it together, I realized that uh, I just had a lot. I guess I was too long-winded. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, do some troubleshooting and, and check some of these components and uh, uh, just see where we stand with, uh, with some of this stuff. I'll show you how to check some of this stuff from the top of the uh, chassis. Hopefully we can do this without getting some glare there. Uh, got my meter set up. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and, like we said, we're going to check the primary. I said it should be around 15 ohms or so. And if we got a good connection on the switch, eh, we're looking at about eight, 17, 18 ohms. I think that I think the primary is good on that. Okay, now remember we were going to go and check the filament, the rectifier filament winding, which should be one or less, and at uh, this is the rectifier tube 80. Uh, the big pins are the uh, heater uh, pins, so we'll just stick that in there. Should be a low reading or so. We're looking about 0.7 ohms, 0.6. That's in line with what we were talking about. Now the other two over here are the uh, uh, plates of the rectifier, which goes to the high voltage winding of the transformer, and we said it would be a fairly high resistance. So let's check that. And we're looking at about 700 and 715 ohms or so. So, and we said it was center tap, so let's go to ground. We'll go to one side, and it'll be approximately half of that, okay? Approximately. And yeah, let's see, 372 ohms. Let's go to the other end of it. And yeah, let's see, 343. They're not exactly even and I've explained it in other videos and it has to do with the number of windings because one half of the coil or the windings is farther away from the core so it has to have more windings thus more resistance to induce the same amount of voltage okay now we said we could come over here and we're gonna <clears throat> take our bulb out of here and we did and we'll go to ground because that uh, and so we'll go to here and this is measuring the other filament windings for the rest of the tubes and we said it should be less than one or so and so we're looking at 0 0.8 0 0.7 feel good that that's that's correct all right let's uh we tested this transformer. I think I feel good that it's good. Now let's go and uh, we'll look on testing this speaker uh, choke, speaker coil, whatever you want to call it, and the output transformer. Let's take a look at uh, the output transformer and that's this here and it basically what it does is an impedance matching to transfer the maximum amount of energy um, you've got a low impedance speaker and a high impedance output on the plate of this output tube so it basically matches that so you have a uh, efficient energy transfer that's all it is uh, if you were to put a low across that it would short draw a lot of current and uh, so you want to keep this high impedance going to the low impedance that's all this this does okay this typically 
and it's it's the DC resistance vary on these things and I I see them I've seen them from a couple of hundred up to 1500 on this side but what we're looking for is for it not to be open this will be on this side going to the speaker uh, the uh, speaker coil will be low on the order of one ohm or less and since it's in parallel with this it's going to be probably less than one ohm now this up here is the uh, speaker choke or field coil whatever you want to call it that makes the magnetic field and this varies also but it, it if you'll notice it comes off the high voltage off the 80 comes up goes through it as a filtering there's the capacitor here it's on the B plus side goes through here filters again and it comes out here to this capacitor which is the other uh, capacitor which it's filtered also going to the rest of the tubes so these are typically we're, we're, we're looking for an open is all we're looking for but in the field codes they go about 1200 1400 1600 somewhere along in there so we're going to do the do this looking basically looking for openings and um, so I'm expecting a, uh, some low hundreds here and some uh, over a thousand or so here. But if I get up into the mega ohms or infinity or something like that, I know that it's going to be bad. Something I failed to mention is in order to test uh, this, uh, the primary of the output, we're going to go up to pin 3 and also pin 2 of the output tube. Then to test this we'll stay on pin 3 and then come down and go to pin 1 uh, on uh, the 80 tube to test our field car, our speaker field call. Let's uh, while we're on the front, let's uh, go ahead and check the uh, uh, speaker voice coil. And that's just basically on the secondary side of that the output transformer. And like I said, it's in uh, parallel, so it's going to be less than one ohm, I'm almost sure. And it is. It's uh, about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Now we're going to go uh, across pin uh, 2 and 3 of the output tube and uh, remember they go they, they, they are numbered clockwise well on the top they're counterclockwise so the big pins this one will be pin 1 so this one will be 2 so 2 and 3 here so let's go ahead and put this on pin 3 and this will be measuring the uh, output primary, output transformer primary, and we're looking for low 100s or something like that or so. And we're getting what? Not getting nothing because I'm not getting a good. Come on. You ever talk to your meter? Yeah, I do. That's about 379 ohms, 380. That, that sounds about right. So let's leave that one in pin 3 and then go over here to pin 1 of the uh, rectifier tube. And we should get somewhere over 1,000, 1,000-ish, 1, 1,500 or something along those lines. And we're looking at 1.185K, 1,200 ohms. That, that sounds right. So I feel pretty good. Our transformer's good, and our field coil, speaker field coil, and the output transformer. I feel like all those are good. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can't get around to, to checking the uh, uh, the IF 
transformers and and uh, doing some checks on those. We may have to go underneath for that one. But anyway, I feel real good about that up to this point. Okay, I've done some more troubleshooting. Uh, and I'm going to try to show you what I did. I went to the bottom of the, uh, of the chassis itself. <clears throat> uh, and this coil and this coil are those two cans that uh, I had mislabeled in the in the beginning. To check this coil, and, and this is where a lot of people get confused in troubleshooting, but uh, this particular coil here is fairly straightforward. This is the antenna and the ground connections on the back of the uh, radio so you basically just got to go across that and I measured 18 and a half ohms there this one's a little bit more difficult uh, but if you look and you look for junctions and and, and tie-in points and on tubes and, and other components uh, so you can trace it out now this, if you'll see here, is the grid cap off the first uh, 66 tube. So you just clip to it, and you're on this particular point. Now this 12Z is on half of the uh, main tuning condenser. And so you look for that tie point, and you can clip your uh, meter there. Now this 27Z is a switch and that's part of the band switch. Uh, I'll, I'll show you some close-ups of these these switches. We're going to have to do some uh, re-engineering of the switches or some repairs of the switches because they're not exactly they're, they're, they're in disarray right now. But basically what they're doing is they're switching part of the coil out to change the band. That's pretty much it. And that 27Z matches the 27Y so that you're switching these coils in and out together. Uh, so the other end is on the bottom of that switch and also the junction of these two resistors, number 15 and number 20. Uh, so you look for that junction and you can measure this coil and I got 5.3 and I went through the whole process the same way the IF cans did the same thing the good news is all the cans and all the coils appear to be okay they're in the uh, anywhere from 5 to 30 ohm range which is that sounds about right for IFs and and, and these coils. So we're going to go with that right now. Uh, what we're going to do next uh, is get inside here and and check the cant ohm resistors uh, and uh, I'm going to give you a little hint. Uh, we're going to have to do some calculations and replace those. Uh, a lot of times those things do go bad. Alright. Hope I uh, this shows up good enough. Um, I want to thank my good buddy Josh Bowman. Uh, he ran me a, a copy of the parts list. This is uh, the schematic. He ran me the schematic. My printer, I've got to get a new printer, but he ran me a, a good copy. And um, I don't know how he done it, but he worked some magic and he gave me the parts list in a column like this which is a lot easier than this so the can ohm itself is number 21 Zulu and 21 Yankee and that's the can ohm resistor and one and the, the 21 Z is the 8500 ohm and the 21 Y is 25,000 ohm so let's see if we can find it on the schematic. The 21Y is this particular part here. Okay. 
So the 21Y is the 25,000 ohm. So you would tend to think that's the longer part of the can ohm. And then the 21Z, or Zulu, is this part mm -hmm. right here, which is the uh, 8500 ohm resistor. Okay, so let's look. See, let's trace this end here. Goes up and over, up and over, and comes back down. So this point is the tie-in point here. So if you go to pin three, that junction will be in between those two resistors. And that's just one way of finding these things. Let's go inside the chassis and see where it's physically located. Here is where the can home is physically located. And this is only a two section can home. And these things, uh, and you, and you can put down in the comments how, how many you've seen before, but I've seen, I want to say about seven. I think the uh, that GE Colorama had about a seven stage can ohm, and I've seen, most time they run three to five in, in what I've run into. But uh, this comes from the pin three, so this is that tie point we were talking about in between. Of course, you can physically see this is going to be from here to here should be 25,000 ohms. And from here to here should be 8,500 ohms. So let's let's check and see what we have here. Uh, let's see if I can get you, let you peek inside here just a little bit. There you go. Maybe you can see that. Okay, from here to here should no, that didn't work out did it okay from here if I hang it on the wire it'd probably be better to here should be 25,000 ohms so we're getting 25.6 K that's a good number I you know that's class that's close enough um, and also from here to here should be 8,500 ohms. Okay. Make sure we get a good connection. Uh, what is that? What does that look like to you? Well, you can't really see. 20 meg? That sure doesn't work, does it? So, we're going to have to replace one of these, or both of them, and um, we'll have to see if we, how we can do it, and we'll do some calculations to see what size resistors we're going to have to use with it. And uh, there's some people will take and clip these and use these terminals especially if one's open and I suspect this is open and that's that's all fine and dandy but uh, I don't prefer that simply because what if it it's an intermittent short it, it, it shorts intermittently or the resistor comes back or what the, the value is going to change so unless you gut this I personally don't think that you should use these for terminals uh, a terminal block so we'll have to calculate those and determine what wattage resistors uh, these need to be. Uh, as you can see here, the, uh, this is the replacement for the, the filters, which the, the two filter cans, it's been clipped out here. And this one's totally missing. So this has been replaced and this has been replaced. So we'll, we'll try to get us a, a decent uh, terminal block to put those on. Uh, we're just going to have to uh, 
you know, clean this up and, and, and organize this a little bit. Now this looks like a stump full of granddaddies, as my, my daddy used to tell me. And this right here is B plus floating right here. And uh, it uses <laughs> medical tapes, what it looked like, what they used on the speaker. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's calculate the, the wattage of uh, this can ohm resistor. Let's look at uh, the uh, calculations for this can ohm, these two can ohm resistors. Uh, the way I, I like to do it, and it's th this schematic, someone has added this from the original writer publication added the voltages which that's going to help tremendously tremendously so if you'll remember our uh, can ohms were the 21z let's get this over here and the 21y so let's look at this is the one of the main b plus filter capacitors so uh, let's look if we go to this point right here and go up here, that's 210 volts on this leg right here. And it comes over here and it feeds, or that's where 21Z gets its voltage. So if you, on the end of that, if you put your meter there, it should read 210 volts. Okay? Now, if we look on the opposite side of the resistor, it has dropped the voltage down to 120 volts. That's a 90 volt voltage drop, okay? So, there's a couple of formula, form, formulas <laughs> that we need to, need to look at, and one of them uh, to, to figure the wattage, we've got the, the power in wattage is equal to the current times the voltage, or pi, P equals IE. Uh, also, in order to find the current, we can find that because we know what the, in theory, the resistor is, which is, in this case, 8,500 ohms, 8.5K, and the voltage drop from 210 to 120, is 90 volts. So we take and we divide 90 volts. The, the formula for the current is I equals E over R. The uh, way I remember that is the eagle always flies over the rabbit and, uh, in the Ohm's Law. So um, we take the, the voltage of 90 volt drop across 8500 so that's 90 divided by 8500 and that gives us 0 0.011 uh, amps or about 11 milliamps so we take p equals ie and you take that 0 0.011 and multiply it times 90 and that comes up with 0.95 watts or just under a watt so we can uh, calculate that and we can uh, uh, a lot of people use the times three as a, as a safety factor um, I think I'm going to go with two because simply because I probably have a two watt resistor that I can use uh, in that application the same goes for this one over here now we can just go ahead and put a 2 watt resistor if we think let's calculate it also because it may be more more or less you know so uh, in this case mm -hmm. if we look right here this is our 21 Y and it's coming off of here and it shows that 120 volts and then when it gets over to the uh, uh, cathode of this second 6D6 it shows it to be <laughs> 3 volts so that's a 
And so we do the voltage drop across that resistor, which is 25,000 ohms, which is 120 minus 3 is 117 volts. So we do uh, the voltage. Uh, we, we take voltage 117 divided by 25,000, and that'll give us 0 0.005 amps or 5 milliamps. Okay, we take that and, and insert that in the formula P equals IE 0 0.005 times 25,000, and that comes up with 0 0.42 watts or a half a watt. So a two watt resistor will be fine. So we can build this this can ohm out of a couple of two watt resistors and I feel comfortable that it'll be it'll be fine. Now the problem you run into is how do you how do you construct it? How do you construct something to replace this? Oh uh, and, and that's what we'll have to address. It, we sh we've got, I think, plenty of room back in here if we can mount it right. Uh, we can mount a couple, uh, maybe a terminal strip and make a make a, a new one. And perhaps even just leave this in here for legacy to, to show what was in there in the beginning. The uh, These uh, switches up here, this one, this is the tone switch and this one is the band switch. They don't feel like they're working correctly and I'm gonna, uh, in the inset, I'm gonna show you why they're not, they don't feel like they're working properly. I've tested them with a meter and they're working, I mean, they're making continuity and they'll need to be cleaned up and everything, but the action, the feel of these switches don't, don't feel that good. And um, I'll show you in the inset why that is uh, not happening. And uh, so uh, they're actually, I'll describe it because I'll use the same audio. At this point, the stops or the... Um, when the, when I don't know what you what you call them, but the switches have a uh, a notch that it that it clicks to, and in this case, they should have ball bearings, and as you can see in the inset, uh, the um, the ball bearing is gone, and so we're going to have to either replace these switches or find a ball bearing or maybe and and. and I'm throwing this out there, it may be a BB. We'll, we'll, we'll check the possibility of a BB to use in that situation. But that'll be coming up in the next section or so. But it uh, seems like we got a good radio to go with. Let me know what you think about the cabinet, what, what, you, what you feel like I should be doing with that. And uh, we'll go from there. So, Larry, from the hills of Tennessee, Thanks for watching.